Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's another exciting one. You guys asked for it and here it is. Everyone's asking me about a makeup video and how I catfish the men's out there. This has been my go-to look that I've been doing for the last couple of months or so and I love it. It's just so easy and I've got it down to a T. Very simple and I just think it's so easy and put together. I'll go through all the details on how I achieved this look. Whilst we're doing my makeup, I thought we answer some questions. Before we start, I just want to mention some of the jewellery that we have on. I'm obsessed with this necklace. It's by a brand called Back and Forth. It is specially made for me. It says Hong. I love the scripted writing on it. It just looks so elegant and so affordable as well. And I love like the gold. It's just so dainty and so pretty. I've got two custom Hong uh, just in case if I ever forget my name. This will be my very first makeup tutorial on how I achieve this look. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into it. I'm having my cup of iced coffee. I just got out of the shower. My face is freshly washed and nothing on my face. I've just got a little bit of hyaluronic acid on my face just to make my face feel a bit more plump. And we need to moisturise and get this base in order for us to apply our makeup. I think it's so important that when you have a good base and your skin looks good underneath, that is what makes the overall makeup look. I'm dragging out the old school, which is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enhancer. So we're just applying this as a base. I just want to get my skin as moisturised as possible, girl. As we age, it's so hard for me to ensure that my face always looks moisturised. My skin used to be really oily, but since in the last couple of years, I've noticed a shift. It feels a lot more dry in comparison to before. We just need to ensure that our face is well moisturised, so that when we put our foundation on, it doesn't look dry and crusty. I want to put a strobe cream on. This just makes it look a bit more hydrating and a lot more like radiant. And this is what I've been using underneath my foundation. This is called the Peach Light. Well, I find that as I age, I want to look more hydrated and a lot more like luminous in comparison to before. Don't don't get me wrong I love a, like a matte look and I do like it matte in certain areas I prefer like it looks like skin but it's not your skin if you understand what I mean oh girl my face looks so hydrated at the moment I know it's a bit late outside and we're still drinking caffeine I know I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight but hey it's a Friday so the foundation that I'm planning to use today and it's been my go-to foundation are these babies Oh my god, if you haven't tried the Dior Backstage Foundation, you are missing out on life. They are only free foundation that I freaking love, that I would highly recommend you guys. The Dior Backstage Foundation, which is what we're going to be using today. This gives you a different type of like skin like no other. And the shade that I'm obsessed with is 4WO. This gives you like an olive tone, it's so beautiful, it's a bit darker than my neck at the moment but hey we're just gonna go with it and fake the tan look that we're going for i also love the georgia luminous silk this costs an arm and a leg and i only use it on special occasions but mind you the dior one is pretty expensive as well so i don't know where i'm going with this but i don't know why i just feel like i just want to wear this for special occasion and i only drag it out when i need to freaking kick it up a notch I feel with this foundation you have to use quite a bit to get a coverage that you want but it gives you such a beautiful skin like foundation it's so infamous everyone uses it and everyone say that they love it if you have dry skin this will be your baby so the shade that I'm using Georgia Luminous Silk is 6.5 and there's also 9 that I use as well these two shades give you like a nice olive tone it's just such a beautiful undertone that is nothing incomparable I love this foundation to bits and I would highly recommend and the third recommendation I would give you guys is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. This has been my ride or die since like years now. I don't drag it out as much as often, but whenever I wear it again, I'm like, ooh, why did I stop wearing you? You are like a bad bitch over here. I do love this foundation. And the shade that I wear in NARS Sheer Glow is called Stolombi. But this also gives you good coverage. It gives you a lovely glow. It doesn't look dry and cakey. It's just, it's just like on another level. And I don't think I can ever go without this foundation. I've always got a stash of it in my drawer somewhere. Raving about these. But today we're going to be using this. Can you guys tell that when I'm obsessed with something, I've got it in multiple versions of different shades. One's my summer shade. One's my winter shade. No, you got the have 
all the different options. If you get this, you won't regret it. I'll be sure to add all the details down below. So if you guys miss it, it's down there. So let me drag you guys in closer. You can see my face. This foundation is really watery. We're just going to blend out this bad boy. I'm shit at multitasking. So forgive me if I'm trying to blend my foundation at the same time. Multitasking is not my jam. So the first question that someone's asked is, how's your keto diet and your weight loss journey going? If you guys watch my previous video, I mentioned that I was on a keto diet and that is still going well at the moment. I have to admit today, I feel that I eat a bit more carbs than what I should, but it's going really well. I've lost so far around about maybe three to four kilo, which is amazing. We've still got a long way until I achieve my goal. It's baby steps. As long as you have direction, you know where you're going. That's the main important thing. Even if it takes you slightly bit longer and you take a little detour, just ensure you know where you are heading. It's so important just to keep that vision in mind. Sometimes I find myself when I start, I'm so motivated. I'm clear about the journey, but then as you go along the way, just remember that even if you make a mistake, don't worry, just brush it off your back and then carry on with the journey. I was sharing on my social media regarding to my keto diet and some of the stuff that I eat. And I got so many comments from people saying, oh, you are not on a proper keto. And people are being negative. And sometimes that message gets to you and you're like, oh, let me binge out or whatever it is. If you feel that this is right and you're making progress, who cares it's not meant to be perfect you do something to the best of your ability and I think that's important as long as you know the direction it's all about little progress just keep on going I feel that you need to compete with anyone else you just need to ensure that you're the better version of you that took me ages to put on my foundation so I'm just using a beauty blender now we are going to conceal and my go-to concealer that I've been using at the moment is the Too Faced a Born This Way concealer oh my god this is just freaking amazing this is just a beautiful on another level. And the shade that I use is called Golden Beige. I feel that this is just the perfect undertone. It's nothing that's too light and too crazy. It gives good coverage while uh, not being really cakey and dry. And look how much product that you get with this. It's massive in comparison to other concealers. So the next question I have, what do you do for a living? I've got so many people asking me that question. I'm sure I mentioned it elsewhere, but I'm a data and finance manager. I deal with data and statistics. So girl, your girl's got brain as well, not only looks. I've been doing this for so long. Even though it says I'm a data and finance manager, but I feel like I do a bit of everything. If I'm going to be really honest with you guys, I'm at a stage where I feel a bit lost in my career at the moment. I've been doing this for such a long time. However, my job is so diverse. It's not just like one area that I focus on. I do a bit of HR. I do a bit of admin. I do loads of data and finance. But it's just consisting a bit of everything. And I feel like I haven't got a specialist skill. I was just thinking recently that I want like a career change. But I don't know what I need to be doing. What industry I need to head into next. And I've been thinking, oh, I need to go into like a data analysis route. Because my role does consist of that. But then I'm like thinking, what does a data analysis do? person do i feel the next year or so i really need to sit down and think about like what direction i'm going to lead regarding to my career i know you guys see me on social media and youtube and you think that's my main kind of job or whatever it is i just do this on the side guys like this is not my main stream of income i wish it was because i actually love and enjoy doing this it would be my ideal goal one day to like just do social media doing something i really love and not having a boss having to manage anyone and when you have a lot of responsibility in your role there's a lot of pressure there's a lot of stress you know, when you've got employees underneath you you got to think about how you say things how you approach things another thing that i struggle the most regarding to my role is managing people and managing people's expectation i feel that i'm really good at like informal discussions like when i have with you guys not like freaking professional but at work you have to come across more professional knowledgeable and knowing all your shit managing people is one of the most challenging career choice i need to find a job where you get paid a lot but you don't have to make sales. I hate doing sales. You don't have to engage with the public and you're just sitting there doing your shit. I've got the perfect career for this. It's like programming, writing SQL scripts, such a specialist skill. It pays really well, but you don't have to deal with all the other bullshit. You understand what I mean? Girl, I haven't got no knowledge or no experience in that area, but I think it's an area that I really want to go down. I've been doing loads of research lately on how do I get into that industry, what training that I need. I feel that it's important to invest in yourself. And if you're feeling like you're stuck in one area, you need to think outside of the box and do something different. If you don't try and do something different, you're never going to get a different result. One thing that 
is stopping me is freaking fear. Why is fear so hard? You know when you just feel comfortable being where you are, so you're too scared to leave because of doing something different? What if it doesn't work out? You have all this question, you have a lot of self-doubt, but if you don't try, you will never know. That's what I've been trying to say to myself to get myself out of this rut. It is something that I, I feel really scared. There's also the economic climate at the moment where everyone's losing their job and all the opportunities that's available at the moment are very limited. I should feel grateful that I'm actually in a job. I'm gonna set my under eye concealer and my favorite go-to powder is Huda Beauty and I'm using the shade called Blonde. It's more of like a yellow undertone and I just love this. I'm just gonna dab underneath my eyes. <coughs> This is very strongly scented. It gives good results. I'm not gonna complain. Dabble this between my nose and on my forehead, and on my chinny chin chin, and mainly on my T-zones. I also have another shade called Banana Bread. I'm just gonna use this to bake underneath my eyes. This is slightly a bit lighter, so I'm just baking. And we're just gonna leave it on while we're finishing our feet. And what I've been using to contour is called Tantor by Huda Beauty. And the colour I'm using is called Light. I've got this brush by Morphe. It's called the 9R. I'm just gonna do a line underneath my cheeks and then I brush it up like this. And then I'm gonna put some on my forehead, corners of my temple, and then my chin, just to sculpt that out a little bit. And what I also like to do is underneath my lips. I'm just gonna use my beauty blender and blend all the contour shades in so this is what it looks like all blended in i blend it all the way down my neck i've been having fat injections underneath my chin i really noticed the difference and i think it's freaking amazing i've only started noticing results like drastically once i had the second session but apparently after the third session that's when the results are meant to be amazing i already see a difference but i'm like oh god when you have that third session, you're gonna be looking like snatch. I need to use some liquid highlighters on certain areas of my face. You can't even see this anymore, but it's a Cover FX Custom Drop. This is called Moonlight. I just apply a little bit on like the high points of my face, my nose, and a drop on my upper forehead on only one side. I don't want it to be shiny all over. Then we're gonna use our Beauty Blender again, just to blend it out. Gives you a little bit of a glow. We haven't powdered the outer parameters of our face. I'm gonna do that now i'm using the chanel loose powder this one's slightly a bit of a darker tone and i just love like the, the fine powder on this so i use that on all the outer parameter of my face where i basically contour skin is just so important i think that is like the end all be all if you want to look good you need to ensure you have a good base down the bottom now i just want to bronze my face and what i've been using lately is estee lauder bronze goddess this packaging is just everything i just mix the three shades in together and just bronze the brush that i'm using is the mac 135 i just love this because it's so flat so just the outer part of my face and it just gives you a lovely bronze glow. The highlighter that I'm using today is called Becca Royal Glow. I'm so sad that Becca has gone under and the highlighter is just amazing. I just love the highlighter so much. It's on the tip of my nose, on one corner of my forehead, a little bit on the corner of my chin and then my cupid's bow. Look at that sheen girl. The next part is blusher and these are my two favourite go-to. It's both by Benefit. One is called Throb and the other one is called Coralista. Look how beautiful these shades are. So I used this underneath and then I just hit this on the outer top part of my face. It's just got a beautiful glow and sheen to it that makes your face and your cheeks just pop. I just love blusher so much. It just gives you such a beautiful baby doll look. We are going to do our eyebrows now. I'm going to do that off camera because I cannot do it on camera. But the palette that I've been using is the Anastasia Beverly Hill Brow Pro Palette. And the shade that I'm using is called Alburn. And I'm also going to use Ebony. Mix of those two on my brows. And we are back with my Caterpillar eyebrows. I know they're a bit dark at the moment, but once you put on the eyeshadows, it'll bring it alive, okay? I went a bit thicker than usual. I don't know if I should have done that, but hey, we're just going to go along with it. Another question that everyone's asking me is, how do I feel about the uneasing of the lockdown, the opening of the UK? And I'm like, yes! Finally. Finally, it's happening, guys. Just in a nick of time, slightly a bit sad. My birthday is on the 16th of July, which is next Friday. And the easing of the lockdown of the 19th of July. So a couple of days after my birthday, after the weekend. 
oh, what a bummer. Like, we are going straight back to normal. And I'm like, hmm. I agree that we need to get back to some normality. I am a bit nervous about getting on public transport. So I feel that if I was on public transport, I would still be wearing my mask. In certain locations, I think I'll still be sticking to the rule. Someone's asked me if I'm vaccinated. I've had my first vaccine, which I done run about maybe a week ago. In around about three weeks time, I'm due for my second jab. Originally, they said 12 weeks. But when I spoke to the nurse that did my jab, she said that I can walk in after four weeks and hopefully I can get the second jab. And then I'll be all set and good to go for a holiday. Today's palette we're going to be using the Morphe 39A. This is what the palette looks like. My sister has actually got a code with Morphe. So if you're interested, use the code TWI. I'll ensure to add that down below. We are going to be using the shade as a base down the bottom deepen it with all the brown shades in my eyes i am not an expert in this department but like a little bit of color on our lid just makes our eyes come alive but first i'm going to be using a very fluffy brush morphe as well and it's m504 i'm just using that neutral tone apply it all over my lid i feel a bit nervous coming out of the lockdown if you are not asian you may not have experienced this i did experience some racism during this covid pandemic and i've never really thought about racism that much but there are some people where they have like such a strong cause and they're fighting for something my whole life i've never been hugely impact on the topic of racism and obviously i get the odd comments where you're ching chong as a kid you know i've grown up and there's some people that have said like ching chong and like asian sort of stereotype where they've said some racist comments towards me but i've never really sat and like dwell into it it was just something that just brushed off my shoulders and something that i really accept someone's never been really really mean to me where they're like proper pinpoint and direct it at you i don't feel that i've been hugely impacted in that area however i'm seeing all this on my social media it really terrifies me that when we get back into the normal world will i be outcast and will I experience some discrimination? Now, there was one event that happened during the lockdown that really made me think twice about this. I'm like, oh shit, this is serious. I just think that's just like really immature way of thinking and just so ignorant. But let me just go into the background of what happened. What I've experienced that is racism because of COVID. It's nothing like crazy or extreme or anything. I'm also using this shade and this shade and all like the brown shades here to deepen and create more depth into my eyes while I'm talking to you guys. It's just a very simple look, guys. Nothing dramatic. I experienced this and it's within my area in my neighborhood it kind of terrifies me and it makes me think twice and this happened i think maybe around may last year so we're dating around about a year ago during that time our lockdown rule was basically you can only go and exercise once a day you can go only go out the house if you need to go and get like shopping or do something emergency. Otherwise, you're not allowed out of the house. So in the morning, I took my dog out for a walk. I don't consider that as my exercise for the day. That is me doing my duty to take my dogs out to do a shit. Otherwise, where are they going to do their dump? So that was in the morning. Afternoon, I decided that I want to go for a jog. I want to go for a run. Didn't think twice about it. Me going out for a jog now, that is my one day allowance of exercise. Didn't think I was breaking the law. But on my way home, I was about to go into my house. A woman came by. It turns out she's my neighbour. At first when I saw her, I was like, instantly, I smiled and I waved and I was like, hi. Being nice and friendly. The first thing that she came out of her mouth was, do you understand English? And I was just taken aback. I was like, huh? What do you mean? thinking what the hell is happening where does this go from zero to a hundred so quick i was like um sorry and she was like do you understand english and she went off on one i can't see my grandkids i haven't been allowed out the house i haven't been able to do this and here you are strutting around i've seen you earlier on today going out and then you went food shopping and then now you're going out again. So this woman has been watching every single time I've been outside the house. Like she's counting on her fingers to see how many times I've broken the rule, which I haven't broken the rule. I went and took out my dogs in the morning when they went for a walk. That is not my form of exercise. Then I went to do food shopping, which I'm allowed to. And then my third time out was I'm doing my daily exercise, which is all within the allowance of the law. But here she is like asking and questioning me. Give me a lecture. 
of what I should be doing. Why would your first comment be is, do you understand English? She's clearly directing at me as I'm Asian, I can't understand, I, like, I can't read, I can't write. And that is a racist comment, that's what I think. She wouldn't say that to someone that's British. She only directed that at me because I'm Asian. It was really shocking and it really made me really paranoid going forward. Because obviously you live in a neighbourhood, you don't want to build like a bad relationship with any of your neighbours. And I tend to keep myself to myself and I don't feel that I create any drama in this neighbourhood. Whenever I see someone, I say hi and then I just keep to myself. I don't party, I don't blast my music. I'm like one of the younger ones in here. Everyone's got a family, kids and everything in this area. I'm free and single by myself. You guys are probably wondering, how did I react? I kind of just like, um, shush, and I didn't know what to say. I could go off on one and I could spit it out. Clearly, bitch, you're an old bitch. If you're vulnerable, get back in the house. Why are you out here? Background. I'm just looking at her and I'm just like, you shouldn't be out here. She was stepping so close to me, but I was just like, mm, zip it up. I'm going to cause myself more trouble and more conflict if I retaliate and if I say what is on my mind. I'm like, just zip it up, Hong. This is your neighbour. You live in this area. You bought a house here. They already don't have a good image of us Asian people. And for me to, like, vocalise and... You know how ghetto I can get. And just walk away. Since then, I haven't seen the bitch. Yeah, that was my little incident. So this is what we got at the moment. I don't want to go too extreme with the eyeshadow. I used to always put eyeshadow underneath my eyes. I find that it's a bit too extreme now. I only do it if I'm going out, out. I love the matted look of my eyes, but I always need like a shimmer in the inner corners of my eye. I'm using a little glitter pot from Revolution. Just putting a bit of that on a palette and a bit of Fix Plus. We're going to apply that to the inner corners of our eyes. You just compare this eye to this eye. A little bit of glitter makes a difference. So I just drag the glitter all the way to the center. My favorite eyeliner of all time is called the Epic Liner by NYX. Oh my god, this eyeliner is amazing. I bought a fresh new pack. I don't know where the hell I put it. This is running out. I need to go and get another one. I need to stock up. I need to buy like three or four and put them away. They're amazing, dark and really just fine. It's got like a fine pencil tip. I've just applied on my eyeliner. And then I need to tight line my eyes because it's not cute when you have flesh undertone underneath your eyeliner. I'm using the Huda Beauty Life Liner. I'm going to apply on lashes. And today we're going to be using this pair of lashes from Beauty Gloop. And it's called Miami. And I've just been loving lashes that give you more of like a cat eye look. It's short here and it goes longer. And it just looks so much more sultry. And my go-to glue is the Duo Glue. I stick it all the way to the outside corner of my eye. That's what it looks like with the lashes on. It's just a lot more fluttery at the corners of my eyes. And it elongates. Now we just need to focus on the lips. And we are nearly done. For the lip liner I'm going to be using using today is called clingy and it's by morphe i love their lip liners you know how i rave on about this how cheap and affordable it is and how creamy it is i love this like ready brownie shades for my lip liner recently i like it to look a bit more like russian lips where it's pointy and cooling up so we're just gonna line the lips i just love this shade so much then what i do is i use a lip brush and fade it in so it doesn't look so harsh it's all about the graduation. You want it to go darker and slightly faded in. It just gives your lips so much more depth and so much more dimension. It just looks, ooh, like really pouty. Lately in the centre of my lips, I've been using this Jaclyn Hill. It's called Oh Hi. It's like a nudie pink and it's just so pretty. And we just apply this at the centre of our lips. Again, using my brush, I just blend it out. This is what the shade looks like once you put in the lip liner and the liquid lipstick in the centre. I love a glossy lip. However, I find that when you're wearing masks and I think it gets too sticky, my hair gets in the way. So I want a bit of sheen, but without going glossy and all the mess. So what I've been doing lately, with that little glitter that I used earlier on the corners of my eyes, I want to apply that to the centre of my lips. I'm just going to put a bit on the palette. Use a brush. I just tap it all over the lips to give it a bit of a sheen. And that is the lip combo that I've been wearing lately. Obsessed. Just removing all the powder off the face. And the final touch is just using the Fix Plus. If you don't like me like this, you don't deserve me like this. And that's it, guys. And this is what the final makeup look looks like. So let me answer some more questions before we log off. A lot of the questions that I've been getting is, how is your dating life going? I don't know why you guys are so intrigued with my dating life. I think I should do a series on Hong's dating life. All the singles ladies out there, you know, we can help each other out. 
but my dating life has been dry, 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 to say the least. Nothing's been going on. During the lockdown, it's just so hard to date anyways. I was talking to some people here and there, but nothing came out of it. I have nothing to update you guys, but girl, I'm back on the grind. We are finally free from the 19th, so I'm like... Going on that date nap, booking dates. Why oh, so sad? I was thinking about when was the last time that I kissed someone that wasn't for you know, just to get down to do the deeds. But more of like a passionate "I like you, you like me" kind of way. I miss that feeling so much. It's been such a long time. I'm thinking this is dating back around about maybe seven years ago when I was in my last relationship. And isn't it so sad? I'm hitting 36 next week. Ah! And it terrifies me to think I'm going to be single for another year. I still believe in the fairy tale story. And I know that there's someone out there for me. I just need to make some compromises and stop being so damn picky. I think we'll end the video there with regard to all those questions. I'm planning to do another video regarding to the second part of my immigration to the UK. You guys seem to love the first story that I did with my sister. And I just love the feedback that you guys are giving me. And thank you guys for so much love and support for my YouTube channel. It's been such an amazing journey. You guys have any video suggestions and video ideas make sure you add them down below make sure to subscribe to all my other social media platform and i love you guys so much and i'll see you guys next week bye